Humans will eventually have the technology to change sex as easily, safely, cheaply, and reversibly as we change clothes. That day is not today and could be 200 years from now. But how do we ethically bridge that gap, given that it necessarily involves experimentation on kids and many failed cases will fall into the uncanny valley? Ain't never going to happen is my feeling. Yeah, I think uh, I, I knew that... I knew that I did and was almost certain that you would reject the assumption of the question, which is in the first sentence. The first sentence being, again, humans will eventually have the technology to change sex as easily, safely, cheaply, and reversibly as we change clothes. Um, it's, I mean, it's, frankly, it's easy to say no way um, when you add reversibly um, as we change clothes there. Uh, you know, is it barely within the realm of possibility that we could have the capacity to change all of the systems um, once and only once, thus making a human an actual, a single individual human an actual one-time functional hermaphrodite? I don't think so, but that's at least something that we could talk about with regard to the complexity of the systems and all of this. But the idea of kind of going back and forth and actually being functional as the other sex it's just it's it's just too much. There's there's just no way. Yeah, I I don't think, um, I think it is barely plausible that in a small number of cells you could make an alteration that would cause an individual to go down the alternative pathway. It would be irreversible, and it would be pointless to do it in a small number of cells. You might as well do it at the gamete. I mean, at the zygote. Um, so you have a single cell. And this may, I mean, this is the point actually, right? Like, um, we talk about sexual development, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a toggle. It's not like there are two states. And so the states are binary and we think of zeros and ones and like, oh, just make the zero or one, just make the one a zero. Like, no, it takes years. It takes years. And no, we're not a metamorphic species, but we do go through puberty, which is a kind of like metamorphosis light. And so you, you can't just say, um, you know, turn those, I don't even know what the ana analogies are. I know we know them, they're the homologs, but like turn the female um, reproductive structures into male ones. Like it, it, it can't work that way. And so, you know, w the only thing that I see here as a remote possibility and why would you ever is could we develop the technology to turn, for instance, an XX embryo into a functional male adult, you know, into someone that developed through puberty as male into a functional male adult, maybe, but that would, like, why? Right. Like, why would you do that? Good point. <laughs> right. why? why? Yes, why would you do that? And um, anything that starts later or imagines that you could do it multiple times uh, or, you know, or, or forgets that it's not just... It's not just the reproductive. It's not just the primary sex characteristics, right? It's it, There is masculinization or feminization of the brain, of um, the endocrine system. And there are, with regard to endocrinology, there are effects of hormones, especially the steroid hormones, especially the sex hormones, like the androgens, testosterone, androstenedione, like the estrogens, um, and progesterone, uh, which have not just activational effects, which is to say, ah, turn it on, now get, um, you know, a rush of energy. I don't know. Um, but also organizational effects, which is to say, when you have those hormones in development, they organize your system so that those systems then follow different pathways. You become canalized. And those developmental systems can't just suddenly become other things. They would have to go through a whole other developmental process in order to be so. So it strikes me in thinking about this in this context mm -hmm. that this has a lot to do with actually the last question about right. immaturity. And the point is everything that we perceive is inherently the reason that we bother perceiving it, the reason that we bother thinking about it is about the future. You may be dwelling on the past, but you're dwelling on the past because the past has some implication that is worth spending your effort on. Mm -hmm. The past cannot be changed. And this is like an obsession with changing the past, right? The idea of I was born in the wrong body is instead of saying, well, okay, here are the cards I was dealt, you know, um, okay. maybe you're a, uh, a woman with a very masculine orientation to the world. 
Okay, what are you going to make of that? And the answer is you can make a lot of that, right? right? You are such a woman, mm -hmm. right? Or you could lament the fact that something and something else don't fit together in the way that somebody told you they were supposed to. And then, you know, you can rail against the, you know, the cursed biology and try to go back and unbiology it. And, you know, it's like, okay, A, it's not liable to work all that well. Um, and B, it miss, you know, it's a misorientation. The point is, look, if you walk out into the street and you get hit by a bus and you lose your arm, yep, you're going to end up grieving your arm. But at some point, and it's going to be the best moment of your life going forward, you're going to move on. Right. Right. You're going to say, well, I am a person with one arm. Yep. And, um, I, Let's live my best life with yeah, one arm. Because it's about the future irrespective of whether you got, you know, you may have gotten yeah. hit by a drunk driver and you lost your arm. Are you, is it okay to be mad? Yes. But mm -hmm. the point is if what you are is mad from then on, then you won't do any of the things that you might do even with just the one arm. 